Hello everyone, I'm Red Team Beaver and welcome back to day 5 of the advent of Cyber 3 by TrackMe. Today's challenge will be tackling an XSS vulnerability or cross-site scripting. XSS is a OWASP top 10 vulnerability which I will show on screen right now. So what is XSS? So basically I won't use the same wording here because this theory is actually quite important and you should read it, But so I will try to differ from it a bit. So XSS is basically if a website allows you to run JavaScript code from within like the website itself. So for example, there's a couple of types of XSS and I'll take the probably the simplest one and I will let you read the rest, okay? So let's look at the reflected XSS. So basically, if you would be like here, you would be able to supply um, some message here. So what could that message be? Well, I'll show it on screen right now, but some XSS payloads will be, for example, an alert, right? If you're doing bug bounties and you don't want to mess around and maybe do something that you don't want to do, well, an alert is quite easy to do and won't damage the structure of the application, I think. So basically, the alert will pop up a message if the website is vulnerable to this kind of attack, to an XSS attack, as you can see right now. And that's how it looks like. And of course, there's different ways that you can do XSS. The most dangerous one would probably be the stored XSS because it's basically you send your payload into a database, for example, and it gets run every time a user uh, visits the page. And a good example of this concept is the schooled box on ActaBox, which I've done in the past, but I have not gone around to make a video about it. So let me know in the description below if you would like me to do a video about a XSS-based box. So now that the basis is done, we will start the challenge. So make sure that you are connected to the VPN. Again, if you don't know how to do that, make sure that you watch day three of the Advent of Cyber 3 because I explained to you how to do that if you have no clue. So once the box is started, let's go, just go ahead and visit the website. So we see that there's an L forum, right? And we actually get provided credentials to log in. So let's just go ahead and enter this. So MexKD and password, I'll copy MexKD. So let's log in and let's do password. All right. So we see that there's three different um, topics, basically, with uh, threads inside of them. So let's take the first, well, the bottom one, and let's try our XSS payloads. And if you just follow along the room, the room will actually walk you through the, um, the challenge itself. And I'll just do the same and try to basically put a little insight on the, what we're doing or explain it a bit differently than what TriAcme does, just so you have some added value by watching this. So let's first start by this first payload. So it's not a malicious payload, we won't get anything out of this, but basically if we do hello world and with these uh, tags, these are underlying tags in HTML. So if I were to go here and leave a comment, well, Usually, we shouldn't be able to just leave HTML tags inside our text. However, if we leave it here, we'll notice that it actually worked. So what does that mean? Well, it means that, for example, if I were to do the same example that we did before with the alert, it should work. Oops. Alert. Christmas is here. So if I see a pop-up saying Christmas is here, we know that this is bad, basically. So these are H, uh, HTML scripts for like that. That's like, hey, I'm gonna do some JavaScript, and this is basically JavaScript. So, <laughs> all right. So they changed it to buttmas. That's funny. Uh, so, yeah. So basically, even though we, it's just them. Basically, if you input Christmas, I guess that they're gonna switch it to Christmas. Uh, to, sorry, if you input Christmas, they're gonna switch it to buttmas, right? 
Yes, it's gonna say it again. Yeah, exactly. So I typed Christmas, now it's Buttmas. So that's why my payload is uh, Buttmas is here. But either way, you see that we managed to pop an alert here. So we know it's vulnerable to XSS and every time somebody will click on this link, they will get this script ran. So that's more likely a stored XSS, I would say, because it's being stored within the web application itself. And that's the most dangerous one. For example, see, this is very loud, but in the schooled box on Hack the Box, you will need to find a way to basically transfer, transform this very loud XSS, so with the alert, into a sneaky one by using real XSS payload, which could be, for example, um, you create a new image object and you're like, hey, I want to send, uh, this image is actually being sent from my own web server and that web server, you need to request this file on it, but on this file, you actually need to show your cookie. Anyway, uh, I'm going too deep into it, uh, but you see that we have a token and I can do an example of something dangerous. So as we saw, uh, previously in day three, I think, two maybe with cookie ma manipulation. Well, you know that cookies are important, right? But if I do, let's use another thread. Whoops, I closed it. I didn't mean to do that. So l let's switch threads just so we don't have the annoying um, thing. Well, we could do script Oops. alert. And let's do document.cookie. So if I leave the comment, you see that I get my cookie, right? So think about it, right? If I can send a request to my own web server with, um, and I append to this request your cookie by doing plus document.cookie, well, there you go, I can impersonate you. So that's where XSS gets dangerous. And that's probably why you can see that Stored XSS is the most dangerous form of XSS because you don't need to make people click links or stuff like that. It's just there. It's on the web application itself. All right, so enough theory. Um, well, it's not really theory. It's just practice and show you different uh, concepts. If you didn't understand everything, no problem. Don't feel too bad. It's not that important for now. So if we go ahead and go to our settings, we see that we can actually change our password. So let's change it to, let's say, pass123, which is the example TrackMe gives us. If I update it, you see on top of here, my URL changes and basically I get a new password parameter with a value of pass123, right? So a next access payload we could do would be to fetch this request. So we could make the person fetch this um, URL and change their password. And if they're on their account, then we could basically, it would basically change their password for them because they would be the one fetching this URL, right? So for example, let's say I am a third party bystander and I just visit the forums and there's this payload on a forum thread. Let's say I, I change the password to act, right? So I go on the thread XSS makes me fetch this resource automatically, so it's the equivalent of me clicking enter right now. So I just clicked enter, and currently I'm on MexKD, so let's log out and see what password we need to log in as MexKD. So let's do MexKD, and then do pass123, which is the one we changed to. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work because we, we got an XSS payload that made us fetch the resource and change our password to act. So let's go to MexKD and let's type act now. And as you can see, boom, we're logged in. So we'll do the same thing, but this time it will be against the Grinch, the evil, evil Grinch. So you said the Grinch commented here. And so we can guess that he's still visiting the forums. And what we can do is actually just copy this, um, this uh, payload right here that is being given by TrackMe, but hopefully now you understand it, right? Now you understand that fetch will basically go grab this URL and then it just ends up 
ends the action. So if the Grinch, just like we did, if the Grinch sees this payload, it will automatically be ran and we will have access to his account because his password will not be pass123, which we can actually test right now before we do that. So let's log out again and let's log in as the Grinch and let's do pass123. As you can see, it's not valid. All right, so let's go back to MexiKD and his act password. Then go to general and then post it here. All right, so we fetch this URL and then we close our brackets basically. Let's leave the comment. And now you can see that we posted quote unquote an empty comment because it's actually running code, which actually we can see right here. Uh, where can we see that? Yeah, it's right here. Oop, I'll zoom a bit. Yeah, you can see it right here. So that's our script being run within the HTML code and not being sanitized, not being validated. It's just there. It's in the code. So hopefully Grinch is still visiting this little website forum thread. So now let's log out. Let's log in as Grinch and let's input pass one, two, three. Just like that, we're logged in. That's awesome. So what do we need to do here? Well, if we follow the walkthrough, uh, we just see that if you go to our settings, there's something that we need to disable. And now we disable it and there you go. You have your fifth flag of the advent of Cyber 3 by Triacme. Thank you guys so much for watching this fifth video about the advent of Cyber 3 by Triacme. It's always a pleasure making this video, so if I bring you value, consider subscribing and liking the video. Um, if you want to support me, links are in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you tomorrow for day 6 of the advent of Cyber 3 by Triagni.